Welcome to Rogers TV. I'm Sarah Love, and we are here to talk about the Ontario Winter Games. Uh, it's happening this year, it's happening very soon, and it's happening in Thunder Bay. The first time uh, it happened was, or the last time it happened was 50 years ago. It happened right here in Thunder Bay, and uh, we're here to talk about the exciting event and what's happening with it. I have here with me Barry Strybe and Matthew Lawrence, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, all kinds of stuff that's happening with it. How are you doing, Barry? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for coming today. Yeah. Very happy to be here. So uh, with the mild weather, I know the Winter Games, normally in February, we usually have cold weather, lots of snow. Uh, we're still a go for the Games. At this point in time, we're still a go, and we're confident that... Uh, We'll be fine, and that's where we are. Where we are at at this point in time. So we're thinking very positive. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's that's great to hear. So the games that are happening. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the event and uh, what it means to the city? You know, we're the, we're known as the as the city with the giant heart, and we're going to be having a lot of people here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what it means to have the games here? Well, let me put it this way. You mentioned giant heart, and yes, this community is. And I've been involved in a number of major events in this community. And I can only say um, thank you to the volunteers. Uh, we've got upwards of about 1,000 volunteers coming out to support us. And uh, we can't do it without the volunteers. And, uh, and in addition, the sponsors have come forward too to help us from a financial perspective. So you know what? It, it's the entire community comes together to, to help us put on what we hope are going to be, going to be the best games ever. Um, but it, we do it for one reason, uh, from my perspective as the chair, we're doing it for the athletes. We're doing this event for them so they can come out here. They're 12 to 18 years old. They're young individuals embarking on their athletic career. And this is a moment for them to kind of get to that next level. And we're excited about uh, having that happen for them. And I know the community is going to be excited to come out and watch these young individuals compete and do their very best. And we can only do the best we can in terms of making sure they're relaxed, having some fun, well fed, but all they have to focus on is going out there and compete and do the best they can and hopefully bring home some medals. And uh, so the family and friends that are going to be coming out to supporting them, uh, welcome to Thunder Bay to do that. Uh, but we're encouraging the entire community to come out as 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 many as possible. Uh, it's free of charge to come to the opening ceremonies and to 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 watch the athletes compete at all the venues. So come on out and help cheer them on because um, it'll make for a great games. For sure. How exciting is that? What what kind of numbers are we talking? How, how many people are going to be in the city? We've got. Uh, in total, just over 1,350 athletes, coaches, and officials coming. And we're projecting probably about 400 plus family members coming. So it's about 1,800 individuals coming into our community. community and that is a major economic impact. So it's, it, everybody wins, but uh, I'll just say it again, it's the athletes. That's what we're here for. Fantastic, and what a privilege and what an honor to be able to host this event here in Thunder Bay. We're always honored to be able to host these events. So when we, when we bid for them, uh, we do it with our heart. Uh, this community does have a giant heart and we bid on these major events for that reason, because we know our community and our region too are gonna be very excited about uh, having these kinds of events in uh, Thunder Bay. So again, it's, it's, about, it's about the community too. And uh, we just want to make sure that they have the opportunity to see these kinds of things, right? It's, it's great. You mentioned that uh, in, in the, one of the opening ceremonies, you, we're going to have somebody that was actually participating in the games 50 years ago. We do. His name is uh, Ziggy. What's his last name, Matt? <laughs> anyway, Ziggy. And I, I've known him and I didn't realize he was in the 1974 games here. Um, and he was at our media event the other day, and it was good to see him. Uh, I've known him, known him for a long time, but I hadn't seen him in a long time. So it's great to see him, and I'm so glad he's participating in the, uh, you know, the torch, uh, lighting of the torch uh, ceremony that's going to happen. Uh, and we've got a number of others that are going to be involved as well. So it's going to be great to see that. Thanks, Barry. Now, Matthew, you're organizing this event. What has that been like for you? 
Oh, it's been a, a major logistical undertaking for myself and, and the city as well. Um, but we've seen we've seen you know hundreds of volunteers from across the city jump in and help out. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, you mentioned the snowfall earlier and whether it was a concern and. You know, uh, the mild weather, I don't think anybody can deny it's been happening, but we've seen t huge teams of volunteers get out to venues to help shovel, to, to beef up those courses, to make sure they're ready for race day. We've seen, you know, Snowmobile Club come out and help help transfer snow onto the onto the trails for the kids. So we've seen a huge community undertaking to help make this happen. And, and it's not just even, it's not just the core team of volunteers that we've got working here. Uh, out of the city and in our games organizing committee, but uh, it's local clubs, uh, local athletic clubs around town, you know, whether it's the, you know, if we're holding a fencing event, then you know the fencing club is involved in the organization. And if we're holding a cross country ski event, you know that group's involved. And that that happens with every sport across the city. And uh, and it's just massive. And uh, the logistical uh, the logistical challenges have, have been great, but the, this team has met them in full force. Wonderful. Now, what kind of uh, what kind of events are we talking about here? What kind of sporting activities? Oh, we got a huge list. I hope you don't mind me reading them. Yeah, but go we've <laughs> we've got badminton and cross country skiing week one, along with diving and futsal and ringette and wrestling as well. And then for week two, we've got five pin bowling, archery, artistic swimming, biathlon, curling, hockey, and fencing. So it will be action packed. We will have events going on all over town and you will see folks with games merchandise and uh, hopefully with a big smile on their face, excited about what's happening. And in, so indoor, outdoor events as well. It's a bit of a mixture with the winter games. Uh, we've got some, some key staple outdoor events, but uh, a vast majority of them are indoors um, because there's just so many different sports that kids have an opportunity to participate in. Uh, you know, some of those fall to the winter games now as opposed to the summer games. Interesting. Now, you said futsal. I have no idea what that is. What is that? Uh, futsal <laughs> futsal is, is similar to indoor soccer. It's okay. just played with a, a different style of ball and a different court size. Um, but we actually have some local futsal players here that will be participating as well. Excellent. Now, I saw on your calendar online on your website that there is actually two opening ceremonies. Yeah, so we got a choice whether we were going to do an opening and a closing, and we opted to do two opening ceremonies. That way, when the kids are coming in for week one, they all get the same hype, the same opportunity to get excited before they jump into that competition. And we, th we thought that uh, building and generating that excitement at the beginning was the most important part of the games. For sure. Do you have uh, anything else that you'd like to add to our viewers? Uh, not at this time, but I would love to see everybody out at the opening ceremonies taking place February 16th, starting at 5 o'clock, and again on February 23rd. Uh, and we would really just appreciate uh, as many spectators as we can get out to the different events to show these amateur athletes uh, what Thunder Bay has to offer and, and show them that community spirit so that they can feel like they're competing at a very high level for an event like this so they can pre prepare them for bigger competitions. Yeah, it's so exciting, and, and I wish them all the best of luck in these games. Barry, do you have any last words? Well, I'm just going to re reflect on what uh, Matt was talking about, the opening ceremonies. Uh, we want everybody to come out. Uh, at five o'clock or you know just a little bit uh, after that because at 6 30 uh, the parade of athletes are going to be coming in and we want to make sure there's as many individuals there to welcome them cheer them on as they as they come into uh, Fort William Historical Park uh, uh, courtyard um, that's important it just shows the spirit of what Matt was saying the spirit of Thunder Bay and what what we can offer and it just make them feel so welcome and uh and it, that goes to the coaches and the officials and everybody, all the other guests coming into our community. So um, it's going to be fun. But the com competition is going to be fun too. Yes, for sure. I'm excited for it. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you, Barry. Uh, thank you to our viewers for watching and keep watching for more on Rogers TV.